Hey guys, good morning. Um, I wanted to take some time today to create this little video this morning since I can't be there over voltage current resistance um, and kind of what I'm expecting you guys to know about each of these things so that you can do Ohm's Law math um, at the end of this lesson. Um, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to turn to page 36. I realized that I took that up the other day, so um, you'll need to make sure that you get that from the front. I made a stack for each class period. But on page 36, you'll see where it says electrical current. Now, you guys are going to actually read through all of this, and you'll then tip the words or tie the words um, at the bottom on each of the light bulbs. Um, I'm not going to go through and read this with you, but I do want you to kind of pause the video um, and read through it. And then I'd like you to answer the electric shock questions. Once you've read everything, let's kind of talk about what you've been reading. The first thing you've been reading about is current. Um, we've been talking about current a lot. We've been talking about there's a direct current, there's an alternating current. But ultimately, current, no matter if it is alternating, meaning going back and forth, or if it's direct, meaning it's going in one direction, it's a continuous flow of electric charges, or specifically, electrons. Okay? Now, the one thing that we haven't talked about is how current is measured. We have briefly mentioned it in our FET simulation, but as you can kind of see here, um, in my nice little graphic organizer here, that current is the flow of electrons, AC and DC, but its units are measured in amps or amperes. Okay. Now the unit is, or the, I should say the unit measure is A. Now, sometimes though, we don't see current written as amps. In our equation that we're going to learn, current is referred to as I. All right, now current is probably pretty familiar to most of you since that's what we've been talking about. The other one that's probably really familiar is volts. Um, you're probably used to seeing volts on your batteries. You know, um, what we've been looking at is 9 volts, 1.5 volts. But what exactly is it? We know that it powers what we're doing. It gives energy to our circuit. It is the It gives the current. But... It's actually what we call the electrical potential difference. Now, that makes absolutely no sense, and I get that. But if we think about it like this, like charges don't want to be near each other, okay? So what happens is, is when you get two like charges, and in this case, two positives, because you know current room moves from positive to negative, okay? So those two positive charges are near each other. They don't want to be. So they have a high potential energy. They want to push away from each other. And there's a lot of force behind that to push that charge away. Well, the further it gets away, it decreases in that potential energy. Kind of like your bow and arrow. The further you pull it back, the more potential that it has. Um, I think your reading gave the example of a waterfall. The higher the water is up, the greater the potential. The further it falls, it lessens its potential energy. The same thing here. That potential energy decreases as it attracts to the opposite charge. But it's because of that force, it's because of that potential difference that actually allows these charges to create that loop of current going from positive to negative. So that's what our volts are. Now our volts are measured in V. And it's represented by the letter V. 